Behind it's Julian Alaphilippe. Alaphilippe lift off with Kwiatkowski following him. Straight over the top, Kwiatkowski now the Polish champion forced to chase. Wonderful move by the Frenchman. And Trentini's having a right old go. Two chasing as he heads towards Fiat Olmar. So he'll be brought back. And it looks like it's Wout Van Aert who's bringing this gap back down. Wout Van Aert sacrificing himself. Peter Sagan struggling to get in contact with the former World Cyclocross champion. Looks around. He has a teammate in this group. Is Comprendi there? 100 metres from the finish now as they come on to Villaroma. It's Mohoric on the right hand side. Alaphilippe behind him. Then Sagan. It's going to be between these guys. Nibali at the back. Just a few hundred metres away as Alaphilippe's going to have to launch it now. The 110th edition. Alaphilippe is going for it. They come up to the line. Alaphilippe still at the front. It's going to be him. Oh, he can't stop winning. Actually, I have, uh, it's really difficult to, to realise what I did and what uh, my, te my team did today. They protect me uh, all the day and Tim De Klerk was pulling all the, the race and in the final we control. We make the race uh, harder and uh, I have to do no mistake. I was really focused to control all the attack and uh, 600 to go. When Maurik want to, to attack, I say it's now and ever and it's unbelievable. I, I saw all my teammates after the finish line. Uh, everybody was crying and uh, I make a, a big effort in the top of Poggio to make a big selection and to see what, uh, what can happen. Bertiol on the last little rise at the top of the Quadrament. The 2.2 kilometers of it almost over here. After that, it's a left turn. Again on that road that poses a few difficulties unless you're in a group able to road together. He wanted to ride for a team that rode in the color of the leader's jersey of the Giro d'Italia. He is going to be an Italian winner, I think, of the Ronde van Vlaanderen. This is Alberto Petiol here, riding away in front of the legions of fans, about to make himself a legend. He's back again at the team that loves him the most, and his first ever win amongst the professionals is going to be the mighty Ronde van Vlaanderen. It's Alberto Petiol for EF Education first. I was in uh, Quaremont, feel uh, really good. Uh, Andreas from the car, he just said, uh, if you can, you just go. I closed the eyes and I just went. I looked down in the top, I, I had a, a really good gap. And then uh, it, there were the 14K longest of my life. And Sepp did, uh, guys, Sepp did an amazing job. A champion like him, uh, uh, he worked for us all day. It's just incredible, crazy. We are a really good team. And uh, from now on, uh, you should uh, look more in the pink, in the front. Oh, this is Nils Pollitt's effort. And Nils Pollitt is riding away from Peter Sagan. Oh, he said it was a top ride from the Katusha Alpha scene rider. Look at the distance he's putting in behind. They look around and Philippe Gilbert is the one who has to chase here for the Koenig quick step. Oh, wow. What a moment we're seeing at Paris-Roubaix. And that he was attacking from the gun in Nils Pollitt. Oh, and Sagan's dropped. Sagan is dropped. That is it. 40 seconds the gap. It's got to be enough. Uh, these two, though, are now getting worried about one another. Pollitt has been forced into the lead. And we'll see how the sprint plays out in the velodrome in Perry roubaix What a ride by Gilbert and Nils Pollitt. Here we go. On to the velodrome. Pollitt at the front. Gilbert behind. They come back around. It's going to be launched soon. Half of that to go now. Pollitt waits, he will be nervous. He's never won a race even close to the magnitude of this before. And Gilbert's gonna go on the inside. Here goes Gilles, Gilbert. Gilbert's driving for five. He's out, he has the gap. But can Pollitt come around him? Gilbert looking to the finish. Gilbert's gonna do it. It's fantastic, Philippe Gilbert. Five star Phil does it. And a Koenig quick step for winners of Paris Roubaix again. Yeah, and there's the welcome he gave his new champion. This is the mayor of Roubaix, Guillaume Delbar, presenting Philippe Gilbert. Maybe the most iconic trophy in all of professional cycling.
Whoa. Steady on, Philly. Look at those arms, must be aching now. He's banished it. Seconds, it's coming back. Kwiatkowski takes off his final jacket. Alaphilippe is back at the front. Alaphilippe's recovered. Let's take a look at this. A bit of a slide. Oops, one of the Astana riders going into the field on the left hand side. A bit of cyclocross. Here we go now with Fuglesang, Woods, and Formolo. Fuglesang has attacked now. Fuglesang goes clear. He gets rid of uh, David Formolo. A huge acceleration by the rider from Astana. Fuglesang, look at the speed of him now. He's throwing every single risk possible. Oh! How did he not crash then? That was incredible. He absolutely broadsided it. And somehow, Jakob Fuglesang holds the bike up. What an incredible moment in this race. Here it is. He goes into this corner and he slides the bike totally. How did he hold it up? Wow. It's all about this rider. Jakob Fuglesang under the red kite. One kilometre to go. He's been searching. He's been looking. He's been hoping that Liège passed on Liège. His season has been sparkling, and now he's bringing it home. Jakob Fuglsang wins Liège Baston Liège for Denmark, for Astana. Superb. The 23rd victory of Astana of this season, and the biggest victory of Jakob Fuglsang's career. The winner of Liège Baston Liège from the Astana team. Jakob Fuglsang, the end of a spring campaign that brought him so many top uh, results, but this is the one. This is the one he's been searching for. Fuglsang of Astana brings them another big victory, but the biggest win of his career. The winner of the 105th edition of Liège Baston Liège, Jakob Fuglsang of the Astana team. is a uh, very, very high quality uh, breakaway uh, in the context of a race like this. 32 kilometers to go. There is a Valverde who started off the front there. And uh, one of the Ineos riders, and I think it's Souza, is trying to go with him, but Valverde has just darted away from the group. Molimer has done enough, he's so consistent and uh, as I've said before, when he does win, this is how he wins and in the solo breakaway, so reminiscent of the stage of the Tour de France that he won uh, a year ago. Good work for Trek and Segafredo and uh, Bauke Molimer comes across the finish line, hands on his head, can't believe it, he said something into his radio and there we are, pretty much six hours, five hours and 53 uh, seconds. Here is a rider who could well, uh, in his time of finish at the podium of the Tour de France, never has done so. But here he is winning, winning one of the great monuments of world cycling, the uh, in Lombardia. Nobody reacted when you attacked. Have they underestimated you? Well, maybe you know. I, uh, I was not one of the biggest favorites, uh, I think, for this race, but. Uh, I felt really good the, the whole week already, in mean, the last few weeks, and uh, yeah, I was just waiting, waiting my moment, and uh, yeah, luckily it was uh, was today. Long hard season for everyone, and these uh, these boys deserve that moment of release.